Mr. Innocent Chukuma is still with us. Just before we went on break, we were talking about um, we're talking about uh, the safe corridor, mm -hmm. and you're, you're giving your comment on that. Yeah, I, I, I was saying that is something again. Um, a lot of public awareness needs to be created on why these uh, measures have to be taken to uh, welcome back to the communities those who are willing to give up their arms, those who are willing to give up involvement in, these, um, in the activities of Boko Haram, and more importantly, give information about their whereabouts, their camping, their leaders are still at large, um, not all their uh, way of uh, operations are known by security forces. It is people who are involved in the activities that can give this actionable uh, intelligence. I know on the part of the community, having borne the brunt of the activities, it's difficult to, to, to forgive and, uh, and forget. Uh, but a lot of counseling is needed because people are dealing with uh, trauma. People are dealing with memories of what they went through. And it's not uh, easy for them to wake up one day and say, I have uh, forgiven, I uh, have forgotten. It requires you know, confidence building measures and support. The same way government uh, is willing uh, to rehabilitate those who, uh, uh, who agree to leave Boko Haram, I think measures are also needed to rehabilitate community members who have lost all they had uh, because of these uh, activities. Uh, it won't be an overnight thing, but I believe that over time people will begin to realize it because these are also people who left the community for various reasons. In fact, some of the reports that Ford Foundation supported, especially the one by Mexico, showed that many of the young people who joined actually joined because they were promised loans to put in their business. Some people joined because they were promised uh, goods to sell, which means if this thing had been in, in place in the first place, they perhaps would not have joined. And then, of course, some were coerced you know, to join if they don't join that their family members will be killed. So not all of them voluntarily join. So when you d see these ki kind of cases, you can't help but find a way of uh, rehabilitating them. But it's a difficult process. Mm. So you have, you know, because you say that your team is also on the ground there and you, you report that quite a number of uh, non-governmental organizations are there and civil society organizations. Uh, would you say that the efforts around there are coordinated? I wouldn't say my team, but we work with uh, NGOs that do work in the Northeast and the feedback we get from them is that things are improving, but coordination remains a big issue because this is still a, an active uh, site, uh, it's a security site, and people have, a, now that you're dealing with so many international agencies, they have their different ways of operating. So it requires local authorities in the area, particularly the state government, to uh, you know, better understand how development agencies work and create a mechanism, a forum, for periodic and predictable interactions with all of them so that people will understand what the others are doing. So taking to televisions to condemn and malign will not solve, uh, solve the problem. Mm. Let's switch our attention now to other uh, crises in, uh, in and around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Southern Kaduna comes immediately to the fore. We've seen uh, right now we're beginning to see big grains. We're beginning to see the papers this morning were reporting. Uh, you know, they had pretty strong words on the front page. United Nations is now involved. UN waits into South Kaduna killings. And you see here the words of Khan, the words of uh, JNI. And it would seem that this is beginning to spill over. Uh, what are your thoughts on what is going on in Kaduna? The Kaduna crisis uh, has been uh, something that, uh, in my view, has been badly managed over the years. It didn't just start uh, now. I remember when I was in Clean Foundation about 13 years ago, we commissioned a, a report across the country on uh, uh, violence, ethnic and religious violence. And the chapter on Kaduna focused on this uh, uh, Southern Kaduna crisis with the uh, no, Muslim not link. Uh, uh, Muslim-Christian conflict. And whenever a panel of inquiry is set up, they will go do a painstaking job, make recommendations about what should be done to uh, address it in a sustainable manner. At the end of the day, the reports will neither be made public nor acted upon. What rather what you have is an ad hoc approach when it gets out of hand as it is now, 
a mobile uh, police unit or a military formation, as is currently the case, will be deployed. And once they do uh, an on-the-spot operation, uh, uh, seeming normal return, it goes to back to business as usual. So, so for I, you, what, what do you, what do you believe is at the root of this crisis? Well, these, some of these are historical mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, uh, relations between Christians and Muslims, the communities that make up uh, uh, that part of Kaduna State, even preceding uh, independence. Both uh, successive governments have dealt with it in an ad hoc manner. Uh, for me, there is also a link between what is happening there and the larger question about uh, herds and farmers clashes and all that and one wonders why is it that what government appears to do when the thing gets out of hand is military deployment if we have a, if you compare our situation here we say for instance the east africa where you have wildlife as a major source of income they have wildlife police they have mechanisms for identifying uh, uh, wildlife including uh, chips that are implanted on wildlife and that are, enables them to be monitored. So in our own case, one wonders why we can't have a unit in the Nigerian police to deal with pastoral policing, to ensure that all the uh, grievances and all the conflict that people encounter in that interaction between sedentary farmers and pastoralists are dealt with. Why can't we invest in uh, technology to cheap uh, the cattle? and cows that traverse the country. Why can't we have a unit in uh, immigration knowing the, how porous our borders and how mobile the communities are there? So why do we always get ourselves restricted to just one mechanism, which is soldiers? And when they go, rather than completely deal with the issue, they leave as soon as semblance of normalcy is returned. So I think we need to return to a situation where a comprehensive approach to dealing with the issue that will combine security approaches, combine conflict resolution mechanism, confidence building, and above all, good faith. Good faith amongst all the institutions, whether government, religious, because a lot of it feeds off suspicions, fears, perceptions of domination by one group over the other, and it keeps reinforcing itself and continuing over time. It's definitely a very difficult one. When, you, when, we, when something is steeped in history, because mm -hmm. uh, you said that this has historical mm -hmm. uh, antecedents, it was same over, mm -hmm. as a precedent, I should say now. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when we move forward, I mean, even if something's small, something, there's an immediate cause mm -hmm. of that particular problem, mm -hmm. people will remember the remote causes as well, and it makes it even more complicated. Mm -hmm. Now, we've heard different theories for this particular crisis. We've mm -hmm. heard, uh, you know, We've heard in Southern Kaduna there some religious, leader, religious leaders alleging that this is an attempt to wipe them out. <laughs> uh, we've heard uh, in some other quarters, I think this one from government quarters, that this is rooted in the 2011 11 crisis. Uh, crisis. Uh, we've also heard, you know, people remembering all sorts of things, uh, some of it political, some of it religious, mm -hmm. and now some of it uh, you know, plus pastoralists versus mm. farmers. Mm. Do you think that there's different layers make it very difficult to resolve? It's only difficult to resolve to the extent that previous ones were not adequately dealt <coughs> with. Panels of inquiries set up by government making recommendations about how to resolve them after talking to all the parties to the conflict. Their reports are not acted upon. You know, which is why people keep making references. For instance, the 2011 one uh, around Zungwa, there were, you know, gory pictures that came after that elections about how communities uh, were, were wiped out or killed, uh, mostly uh, Muslim communities. And uh, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, um, not much was done to uh, address that issue. So when this current one breaks out now people make links to that and people are saying that oh uh, some this is a, a revenge for that uh, killing and revenge take place where perception of government effectiveness in dealing with crisis is very very weak and very very low which is the case here